name is Michelle McIntosh and I am the course director for the Bachelor of Pharmaceutical Science degree. I'll give you an introduction into uh, our faculty and also tell you a little bit about the Bachelor of Pharmaceutical Science course. And we have Bonnie Breen, who's one of our first year pharmaceutical science students here to answer questions for you if you um, would like to hear about her experiences during her first year of study. Uh, I will then pass on to Dr. Vivian Mack, who's one of our senior academics teaching uh, into our pharmacy course, um, Bachelor of Pharmacy Honours Masters of Pharmacy. Uh, and then after that we have Danson who is a second year pharmacy student who will be able to um, provide you with some feedback on his experiences as a student. And then uh, a Q&A session with you um, for, you know, as long as we've got activity online we're happy to keep answering questions. Uh, and just to um, a couple of things up front, in terms of eligibility and entry criteria into both of the undergraduate course offerings that we have, um, English, Chemistry and a high level Mathematics uh, or an equivalent at an Australian year level, uh, year 12 level is required. But if you have more specific questions that you'd like addressed uh, around your own individual circumstances, entry requirements or information about fees or scholarships or other information, um, please contact um, us via the website study.monash, uh, click through onto the Pharmacy and Pharmacy Sciences tab and there's plenty of information there and also access to people who can provide you with further, further details if that's what you're looking for. So one of the most important things um, that we, we get asked a lot um, from potential students is what's the difference between pharmacy and pharmaceutical science? Why would I choose one course over the other? Um, so for both of those courses the fundamental science that we're learning about and understanding is it's the same science but the focus with pharmacists are about medicines. They're experts on medicines and working with patients and integrated within the healthcare team. Our pharmaceutical scientists are entering into a field looking to discover and develop the next wave of healthcare products and medicines. So there's quite a lot of overlap but a different approach to the way we teach the course and a diff quite a different learning experience between the two. So if you're studying a pharmacy course, it's very clinically orientated, focused around patients and the impact of their health conditions and their medication on their health outcomes. And so if you enjoy working with people and um, you know, engaging with um, other healthcare providers, part of a team in that environment, that's the way that course is delivered. The pharmaceutical science course does involve a lot more laboratory based learning so you are learning lab skills that you will be able to utilise uh, in terms of um, discovering new medicines. And why would you choose pharmacy and pharmaceutical science as opposed to any other healthcare profession degree or a basic science degree? And one of the things that we suggest to people is to think about well a hundred years ago, what were the diseases that had the highest cause of death in our society? And it was largely infectious diseases, typhoid, diphtheria, measles, tuberculosis, scarlet fever, a lot of viral bacterial diseases that were transmitted. And if you think about that, they're not the diseases that are causing morbidity and mortality in society today. And that's because pharmacists and pharmaceutical scientists have contributed to identifying the therapy that we need to manage those conditions. And so we have the discovery of antibiotics and first and second generation antibiotics, vaccinations, um, oral rehydration therapy, a lot of those diseases have been treated and managed 
because of discoveries made by people trained in pharmacy and pharmaceutical science. And what we're looking for when we're looking for new students to join our course is for people that are motivated and inspired to think, well, how are we going to create the, the treatments and uh, manage diseases that are causing morbidity and mortality in our society today. What are the cures of the future? What is new medicine going to look like? Uh, some of you might be aware that one of the, some of the top conditions that are causing disease in our society would be cardiovascular disease, respiratory disease, cancer, diabetes, the Alzheimer's disease, other dementias. Diarrheal diseases are one of those things that are still prevalent, particularly in developing countries. And our researchers and scientists here within the faculty are working towards those cures and we're also looking for students who wish to contribute to a, a society with a greater healthcare um, future. So as you will have known, we're part of Monash University, the largest university in Australia, between 60 and 70,000 students. The main campus of Monash University is in Clayton. Now our Faculty of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences is located in Parkville. We have our own small campus with five buildings dedicated to just pharmacy and pharmaceutical science education and research. So we are close to the city, 15 minutes on a tram from the CBD, uh, so just to, to be aware of where we're located. We were established originally as a school of pharmacy in 1881, and so we have a long history of um, developing pharmacy professionals and also discovering treatments uh, for uh, a range of diseases. We're also located within the heart of the Melbourne Biomedical Precinct. So this diagram here is just a schematic to show you where we are in relation to other research institutes and teaching hospitals in, in Melbourne. And so the Bio, Melbourne Biomedical Precinct is ranked in the top three cities in the world for biomedical research. That's ranked up there with London and Boston in terms of our biomedical research outputs. So students who choose to study in this faculty are really immersed within the cutting edge of biomedical education um, and research. Now we don't talk too much about our reputation and you're welcome to, um, to search online to see what you can find out about our faculty, but we are the top ranked faculty in Asia and the Asia Pacific region for pharmacy and pharmacology. And so that's a really fantastic platform for you as a student to be trained by people who are leading in their field. We have a couple of fundamental approaches in our faculty towards education. The things that differentiate us from some of the others in terms of how education is delivered. Um, some of the prior, priority areas for us are really around active learning approaches so that you don't come to a lecture here in our faculty and sit down in a huge lecture theatre and listen to somebody talk to you for an hour you'll be asked to do some discovery work or preparation prior to the lecture so that the lecture is a much more active process and more of a discussion and applying that content and information that you're learning to problems. And then we also ask you to reflect on that to think about well what does that mean for you in terms of your future career. We also have a, an individualised or a very small group skills coaching programs running in our faculty. So even though we're part of a very large university, the number of students who enter into the courses, there's about 100 students each year who'll start pharmaceutical science and 100, about 200 students who'll start a pharmacy degree. 
but in groups of about 10, you'll work one on uh, one on one, 10 on one with an academic who will be working with you around the development of skills that we've identified as being really important in terms of the course and um, your career. And we can talk a little bit more about those in the mo in, in the moment. So pharmaceutical science course specifically um, is the area that I work in the most, so I'm going to talk to you about that. Um, internationally, the industry is expanding. As a number of economies are emerging from low or um, you know, developing country status, the economy is changing, more access to medicines, improved healthcare infrastructure, there's a need for more medicines to be available to patients and to treat different diseases to perhaps what we've been treating in the developed world for the last 10, 20, 30 years. Uh, so the market is growing, the jobs are growing and the size of the, the industry in terms of how many employees, how much money is being invested into research and development is expanding at an exponential rate, well into the trillion dollar sort of markets for that. Now that's happening on an international level but it's also happening nationally within Australia and within Victoria. So pharmaceutical and med tech as an industry have been identified by federal government and state government as growth centres for the economy, areas where Australia can really stand out um, in terms of what we deliver. And so we have um, in Victoria 10 teaching hospitals, 9 universities, uh, over 150 biotech companies that are setting up. 10 medical research institutes and the state government have invested or dedicated over $200 million towards the future industry funds to grow those industries and ensure that we are competitive and that we can increase our expert, um, exports. Uh, and so manufacturing is booming within Victoria. So there are jobs in that area, manufacturing of pharmaceuticals, R&D around development of new pharmaceuticals. And we're constantly being asked by the employers, please graduate more students. We need more people who we can hire. So there's great prospects for jobs at the end of the course, which is really important in your decision making process. The, the first two years of the course are very much focused on the journey of a medicine and so it takes a long time to discover a molecule and do all of the research and development that you need to understand that medicine. Can, does it have the right properties to be a medicine? Does it cause any unwanted effects? Is it better than other medicines that are already available? And how do we get it registered and run clinical trials? And so the, it's a, a, quite a long process to get a new medicine developed. And so we want all of the students in the first two years of the course to really understand that whole area. And then after two years, you have an opportunity then to decide Whereabouts in that drug discovery pipeline, what, what are you most passionate about? What do you enjoy doing? Do you want to discover a new target for a new disease or understand a disease? How does that disease affect the body? Do you want to look at the chemistry, a molecule, and how do you change that molecule to, to give it the right physical and chemical properties to become a drug? Or do you want to work out how do you formulate this? How do I make this, this molecule that I know will interact with that target? How do I put it into a formulation that is convenient for a patient where we can get good patient compliance? And we can talk to our pharmacy colleagues to understand where are the gaps in the medicines that are available? How can we improve a formulation so that the patients ultimately will have a better therapeutic outcome. So the third year of our course, students will specialise in either drug discovery biology, medicinal chemistry or formulation science. And we think this is a great alternative to choosing a general science degree to work out what areas you really enjoy 
and then go and do another degree, you actually can do that within the pharmaceutical science degree and use that first two years to really find where your passion is. Some students at the end of third year will go out into the workforce and there are, as I say, a lot of opportunities and jobs available for people. Other students may elect to stay on for an honours year or have enrolled in our Bachelor of Pharmaceutical Sciences Advanced with Honours course where they've up front um, committed to a four-year program. And in that honours year, they'll further develop their skills, hone their techniques and understand their discipline before they go out into the workforce or continue in a research pathway, perhaps onto a higher degree. The skills that we consider most important across the faculty in both of our degrees are listed here on this slide. And it's really setting you up for your career. What do you need to be able to do? It's a given that there's certain knowledge that you need to have, things you need to understand about the pharmaceutical industry. but to let you practice and develop those skills around how do you solve a problem? What is the process for understanding the problem and then identifying a solution and testing that? Critical thinking, cognitive sort of thought processes. Communication is a skill that is highly valued probably in all areas of any career and it's written communication, scientific writing, scientific presentations, but also lay language um, communication of your ideas and scientific knowledge. To be able to give an oral presentation and talk to people as well as creating uh, visual presentations, posters or other types of ways of sharing information. Teamwork is something that we take deliberate care to teach you about how teams function and why they function well. Uh, and so uh, we'll identify in the course areas where we teach about teamwork, we allow you to practice working in teams and you'll also receive feedback and assessment on your ability to work within teams. Uh, scientific inquiry, how do you design an experiment, create your hypothesis and then design an experiment to gather the data and answer the question. That's a fundamental element of the pharmaceutical science course as well as the practical applications, specific techniques in the laboratory that you will need to allow you to contribute to drug discovery, drug design, drug formulation or medicine registration. And we do that because we're a small faculty. There's probably about 1,500 students in total on our campus in Parkville. Uh, with a focus on hands-on learning so that you will get an opportunity to run the instruments in the laboratory yourself. Use the nuclear magnetic resonance instrument, the, the NMR. Generate data on a high performance liquid chromatography system or the mass spectrometry system or how do you grow cells in culture? How do you um, test the way different drugs will affect cells? Uh, and so we're really pleased to be able to provide that small class learning opportunity where you can generate your own data and interpret that yourself as opposed to having to just create um, data sets for you, you can generate your own. We also spend a lot of time working with our students on preparing you with the skills that you'll need for your career. So how do you prepare for a job interview? Write a CV. Um, we ensure that you can network. So networks are incredibly important in your career. So we'll have networking in evenings with our industry colleagues. We will take you out onto site visits into various um, places of employment, um, help you build your online profile using something like LinkedIn and also develop your presentation skills. And a question that's often asked is what are, what are the careers? What, what am I at the end of the degree? Well, as a pharmaceutical scientist, 
there's a huge range of jobs that you can apply for because the skills that you have are transferable skills across many disciplines. So you can see here that there's a broad range of areas that you can work in and it isn't limited to pharmaceutical industries. A lot of our graduates have gone on to work in allied areas anywhere where a chemical has to be formulated, agriculture, um, the food industry, cosmetics, pharmaceutical scientists are often working in those areas. Um, so there's a lot of opportunity for you um, with a pharmaceutical science degree. But I think now would be a good time to pass over to Bonnie and she can give you some specific um, thoughts in terms of what, what's her experience been so far this year because it was only six or twelve months ago you would have been in exactly the same situation. So I'm in the Bachelor of Pharmaceutical Science Advanced Honours degree, which means I have uh, taken on to do the four years instead of the three years. Um, coming here, I always knew that this was the sort of course I wanted to go into. Originally, I wanted to do biotechnology because I didn't know this course existed, but uh, learning more about the course really helped me realise that this is what I wanted to do. Um, but after finding out about the course and deciding this is where I wanted to go, I realised all the benefits after starting here, like the fact that there's only 100 people in my course at the moment in my year level, uh, really makes it easy to make friends. I have a lot of friends who are at much bigger campuses and they haven't really had the opportunity to make friends because they don't do a lot of group work with the same sort of people and they don't have people to sit with in lectures, so it's quite hard for them to make a group of friends. Uh, another thing that I've really liked is being so close to the CBD. I don't live around here, so it takes me um, uh, quite a while to get in every day, but the fact that I can go in my lunch break to go get some food um, at Melbourne Central or um, yeah, I can just step down the road because we're so close to everything, it's really quite helpful throughout um, my experience here. I've also really enjoyed in lectures that we're not just sitting there. Um, it was one of the things I really dreaded coming to uni, having to sit through hours and hours of lectures because I have older siblings who always had to do that. But here we do a lot of active learning, which means we have um, an app on our phone, which uh, they ask us questions through, and then we discuss the answers to those questions in the class. And it's really good because it lets you interact with the teacher and when you um, put your hand up they always answer your questions and because it is a small class, at the end of the lesson if you have any extra uh, questions you can ask your teacher. There's also a forum online which I find quite helpful which uh, you can ask questions through. Um, so yeah, I've, I've had a really great experience here so far. Um, and I've just loved every minute of it, but I've always been very science based like ever since I was little. So um, it's been a really good experience getting to learn all the different parts of science. Oh, that's great. Thanks, Bonnie. Thanks for sharing. And if you have specific questions for Bonnie, feel free to uh, enter those into the Q&A session and we'll get to those at, uh, after we've uh, heard a little bit more from Vivian about our pharmacy course. Thanks, Michelle. So um, I'm Vivian, I'm one of the lecturers here um, in the Faculty of Pharmacy and the Pharmaceutical Sciences. I teach mostly the professional practice units. Um, so I'll talk to you a little bit about pharmacy in the, in the course that we have here. So we currently have a uh, new course uh, which we uh, offered as of 2017 and Danson who we will talk to you about um, his experiences is actually one of our pioneers in our new course. So the course is called the Bachelor of Pharmacy Honours um, Masters of Pharmacy. So what type of student makes the best pharmacist? I guess the first thing, if you're interested in pharmacy, is to ask the question for yourself is why would you want to choose pharmacy? Is it because you um, enjoy working with people, you want to improve healthcare, um, you like the science-related option, um, but you like you know, to work with people as well and uh, be able to work with other healthcare professionals? Um, and that's probably why you chose pharmacy and that's probably a good reason why. So what type of student makes the best pharmacist is you need to obviously have good grades. You need to be good in chemistry, um, but it's not just about grades. So in our course, as Michelle um, emphasized as well, we focus a lot on skills. Um, because we find that pharmacists, you don't, not only need to be clinically um, 
a smart, I guess, uh, but you also need to be able to communicate with people well. Um, you need to be able to problem solve. Um, you need to be a good uh, critical critical thinker. Um, so we call ourselves medicine superheroes, um, if you see in the slide. So um, there are different attributes that we um, would make a good pharmacist. So you should be hardworking, um, organized, and most importantly, self-directed, because in our course, you do a lot of um, self-directed learning, um, active learning, as um, Michelle's also um, mentioned before. So in this course, it's a five-year course. Um, that's why we call it a BFARM on MFARM. So the first four years uh, would be an undergraduate um, course, which you do on campus. The fifth year is actually a paid internship. So you will still do an internship as per usual. So in Australia, you have to do a four plus one, so a four-year undergraduate course and a one-year internship. But the difference at Monash is, as part of the internship, um, you'll be doing um, several different subjects, and that would um, you would end up having an M farm. So you have an undergraduate and also a postgraduate at the end of the five years. So throughout the four years, um, you also have different kinds of experiences. You'll be able to go out on placements, um, which I'll ask Dan to share with you as well as experiences. Um, you will get to go out and in, in, you know to a hospital and community setting um, as of year one. So. Um, you don't have to wait to year three and four, which is what we usually do um, in, in a previous time. So in the fifth year um, of the course, um, you will actually have to work in either a community or a hospital setting um, as part of the internship, and then you'll be registered as a pharmacist here in Australia. So the five-year five -year course makes it globally relevant to the best programs in the US and also in Europe. Um, all these courses are also a five-year course, um, and it makes us comparable and globally relevant as well. In our course, we use a lot of technology. Um, and I might get um, Dan to talk to you a little bit. Um, he'll share his experiences as well. Maybe, Dan, if you want to chime in, uh, we do use a lot of virtual pharmacy simulations here, which is something that we are quite proud of um, at Monash. So one of the technology that we use is a virtual dispensing simulation, uh, which Dan sort of uses as of uh, year one. So maybe if Dan, you could share a little bit about how you use it and how do you use it for learning. So uh, just to reiterate once more, my name is Danson. I'm a second year pharmacy student. Uh, I'm doing the five year program. And uh, essentially this virtual program that we do is uh, to give an understanding of how uh, to dispense and how to interact with patients on a virtual uh, setting. More often than not, many students would not get the chance to work in a community pharmacy for reasons, for specific reasons. And so this does offer a really good platform to uh, broaden your skills and just sharpen your skills in regards to dispensing and uh, getting to ask the right questions before you do go out and dispense that medication because there are certain questions that you do need to hone in before uh, you that you end up get you end up giving the uh, the medication. So it's very very it's a very very important tool and uh, it's something that we do use on a regular basis just to continuously practice and improve in our skills. Yeah. Thanks, Danston. Um, so in addition to virtual pharmacy simulations and, you know, the technology that we use, we also do different types of simulations. So uh, we have role play activities because you have to interact with a lot of patients. Um, when you're a pharmacist, you also have to interact with a lot of other healthcare professionals. Um, so there are a lot of opportunities, like what Michelle was saying, to practice your skills. Um, similarly, in a farm, pharmacy course, um, I think Dan can agree that he has to do presentations, oral presentations, almost every week, um, and role plays, you know, simulated role plays, and and that actually helps build your skill um, over time. It might be a little bit daunting at first. Um, I'm sure Dan will share with you in a second, but I think practice makes it a lot easier, um, and especially when you're doing it in a group of friends, um, it makes it, you know, a, a more conducive environment as well. And we do it, and we do this all in small group workshops. So you'll you have like 20, 20 students uh, with one facilitator, um, and you do that every single week. So um, once you become, once you, why do you want to learn pharmacy, and where do you want to work? So where do you find pharmacists? A lot of times you might think a pharmacist, you know, work in a community pharmacy um, behind a counter, um, or in a hospital setting. Uh, but as what Michelle was saying for pharmaceutical science, similar to pharmacy is that you know it, it gives you a platform to be able to work in a lot of different places. Um, you could work not only in hospital and community setting, but you could also work you know as an academic if you want to refer to your studies. You want to be an academic like us um, in a university, but you could also work in government sectors, work in policy, uh, work in the industry as well. Um, to be able to work in non-profit organizations, and it's all about improving healthcare. 
Uh, we also have people with, you know, a pharmacy degree who have gone into do uh, further studies in IT and develop new software to improve uh, medication use in patients as well. So pharmacy degree actually gives you a wide range of options um, in the workforce. In addition to that, um, in hospital settings, you can also do different types of specialization. So if you're interested in cardiology, you could be a specialist cardiology um, pharmacist in a hospital. Um, if you're interested in pediatrics, for example, you can also specialize in that, um, oncology, um, geriatrics. So there are a wide range of specializations um, that you can explore. And I'll probably hand it over to Danson. So if Danson, if you could share maybe your experiences as a pharmacy student here um, and also, you know, anything you'd like to share. Yep. Okay, so I actually am an international student. Uh, I moved here from Kenya uh, back in 2016. I did the, path, the Monash College pathway. So essentially I did one year of um, foundation year after which I then joined um, Monash University in 2017, now doing the pharmacy program. Now, my experience has been quite interesting, really, uh, in the sense that I had to essentially move from Kenya to come here to study. Uh, and it was really, really daunting, really, uh, given the fact that, you know, you're starting, you're starting from scratch, you don't get to meet, you don't, you don't know anyone, really, uh, and it's very difficult to, to make friends. But essentially, the, the, the thing is, Monash, Monash as a whole, not just Monash College, but Monash University as well, really do give you that platform to engage and interact with uh, not just the faculty members, but also provide that platform to uh, get to meet other students who are also in the same boat as I was and just get to understand and just share experiences that you do feel at home. And I did actually uh, feel at home. And it was really, really, uh, a really, really good thing that Monash did. Otherwise, it would have been very, very difficult for me to make friends. Uh, we are uh, currently, I, like I said, I'm a second year pharmacy, uh, pharmacy student and uh, what, we, what we've just done currently is that we've actually gone on placements uh, and these placements have been such an eye opener to, to me really uh, in the hospital setting uh, because like Vivian said, uh, fourth year pharmacy students and I think it's only third or fourth year pharmacy students that usually get the chance to undertake hospital placements but we in second year uh, do get that chance and so it's really, really uh, a good thing for us as as, um, as early as this to get to get that experience and improve on our, not just our communication skills but also empathy uh, given a patient in front of you and uh, and just pretty much talking to them about certain things one of the things that we've covered was a medicines list and essentially just explaining to them what a medicines list is and just uh, honing down on what what it's used for uh, what are the benefits out of it and essentially just getting them to understand how to you know, edit it given they have a, uh, given them a change of medication. So it's really, really, uh, it's been a really, really good experience. Um, also, uh, not just that, we've also been given the chance to undertake uh, some lab practicals, which is fantastic. Uh, at the start, I thought we were not gonna get any labs, uh, but we do get labs, mm -hmm. uh, it's happened in the second year actually. So we do get to, we do get to manufacture our own uh, products, so creams, ointments, uh, those sorts of things that essentially will be used by patients and uh, it's, it's, it's just really fun and amazing how you can make a product from scratch and just essentially, you know, someone else can use it to um, apply it on their skin or apply it on, you know, the area which is supposed to uh, apply it on and, and eventually get a therapeutic uh, effect out of it. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's been a really, really good experience and, uh, uh, yeah, I would, I, w I would actually share yeah, it. about it really. It's a really, really good experience, yeah. Great. Well, thanks, Danson, very much, and Vivian for telling us more about the the pharmacy course. Um, and we've got a number of questions here, so I'll um, hand back to Vivian to moderate our Q and A session. Sure. There's a question here about, you know, I think Danson mentioned before uh, yes. the reasons why someone wouldn't work in community pharmacy as a student. I think that it's because, you know, if you're an international student, for example, there are certain restrictions on a student visa uh, to be allowed to work. Um, and so that's probably one of the reasons why um, some students don't work in the community pharmacy while they're actually um, studying. We do encourage students to be able to do a bit of part-time work in the community pharmacy just because it's assisted so that you can get that experience. But some students are not able to do it because of uh, visa issues. Um, how competitive are pharmaceutical field courses? Um, they are competitive courses. Uh, so uh, this year we had 130 students 
uh, enter into the first year of our program. Uh, so you know you do need to have a, a quite a competitive ATAR score um, and be you know really interested in this as a as a career. Um, but again, I think um, Bonnie mentioned that a lot of people perhaps aren't aware of our degree. So um, even the fact that you're on this webinar puts you at an advantage. Um, great. Um, there's another question here from an international student who is studying, I think, pharmacy overseas um, about finding jobs here in the Victorian hospitals. Um, uh, you need to be a registered pharmacist in Australia to be able to work as a pharmacist. So um, it depends. It depends on a lot of different things. Uh, you can probably visit the Australian Pharmacy Council website to find out more. Um, you can probably come in um, as a uh, international graduate uh, stream, but you can find that out from the Australian Pharmacy Council website. Um, so what? professions does the pharmaceutical science field lead to? I guess you've mentioned that before, but I guess the question also is about competitiveness to getting jobs. Yes, so um, there's lots of opportunities and I think whatever you do and whatever you study, your career opportunities and how competitive it is, it depends on, on you being excellent at what that is. And if you work hard to high standards, you'll always do really well and there will be opportunities for you. Um, one thing that I never thought about when I started my course was how, how much opportunity there is for international travel. Uh, and I have traveled all around the world, to all continents um, in my career as a pharmaceutical scientist. And some of you might be interested to know, actually, I'm a pharmacist by training. So pharmacists mm. have the knowledge um, and the science to move into this field. So I don't practice as a pharmacist anymore, um, but I, I meet pharmaceutical scientists in not-for-profit organizations with um, UNICEF, UNFPA, uh, the World Health Organization. Uh, there's just no limit, to be honest, in terms of where your career can go as a pharmaceutical scientist. Great. Um, I don't know if maybe I said this wrongly before, but a, a couple of you have been asking about the three-year Bachelor of Pharmacy and Master of Pharmacy course. It's actually a four a four-year undergraduate course plus another one year, so it actually make it five years, not three years. Maybe I accidentally said it wrong, I'm not sure, but it's five years, so four years undergraduate. Um, so in the first two years, you, um, the first year you learn a lot about um, how the body works, um, how the medicines work, um, so it covers physiology, you need a bit of biology as well in there. Um, you learn about professional practice, so you, you cover topics like professionalism, um, oral communication, um, being able to communicate with different types of people and different types of cultures. Um, in the second year is when you move into more patient care processes where you cover comprehensive care topics such as um, gastrointestinal, um, pain, dermatology, um, Dancing will be covering you know, things like uh, cardiology in the coming semester. Um, so that progresses throughout the year. So it's a four-year undergraduate course um, and the, in the final year, in the fifth year, it's an internship. So you actually have to work out in practice. You need to actually have a job. Um, and as part of that, you'll be doing a couple of different other, um, the intern, intern foundation program. Um, and then you have to sit for exams at the end of it, um, which allows you to become an Australian registered pharmacist. So I just want to clarify that a couple of questions asking if it's a three-year condensed course. Um, so is it possible to complete a Bachelor of Science and then enter a Pharmaceutical Science course? Absolutely. Yep, definitely. So we um, often get students who will apply after having completed another degree where there's opportunities for credits. Um, we go through those unit by unit and look at, at where a credit could apply. Uh, so definitely um, the our mature age students uh, have been very successful in this course uh, and so that's certainly something there. I think I also saw a question there um, about polytechnics, Sing Singapore polytechnics um, who've completed a diploma in 
pharmacy science or pharmaceutical science um, and there certainly uh, are credit programs for those students to enter into the course at Monash University uh, but that's something that we could probably address more specifically offline uh, if you want more questions about that and there is a, a career expo in Singapore in August um, so I'll be talking to all the students from the Polytechnic Universities in Singapore about uh, our course and entry into pharmaceutical sciences. Oops. Bonnie, could you tell the, the people on the webinar what you've enjoyed most about your first few months at university? Hmm. Um, I do very much like science, so actually not having to learn English anymore or doing math full on, you still do need to know a lot of math for the course, but uh, it's applied differently and it's applied more in a scientific way rather than just a math, math, math way. Um, and uh, so I, do four, I did four subjects this semester and two of them were chemistry subjects and one was a biology subject and another was called scientific inquiry. So it was more about your thinking skills and actually applying your skills to science um, to be able to work in this workforce. Um, and but because I love uh, biology and chemistry so much, it was really great to get to learn more in depth. Excellent, thanks, thanks. There's a question for you, Dancers. Mm -hmm. um, someone wants to know what do you think you like best about the pharmacy course? So, for example, is it the people, the learning environment? What is it that you like best? Hmm, that's a good question. Uh, I'd probably say how small the campus is. Uh, there's lots of campuses around the world that are massive, you know, Texas State, for example, your Harvard, your MIT, they're really, really large institutions. But here at Parkville, it's a very small, tight-knit community where you get to know everyone and you, you can easily make friends. And not just that, but also have a really good relationship with your uh, lecturers mm -hmm. and essentially get to just get to improve yourself on a whole uh, on a whole another level. And I think that's the most uh, really, 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 really um, good thing that I really like about this campus are uh, the fact that you can easily make friends and just uh, continuously improve yourself and uh, yeah, just get to know everyone uh, as a whole generally. Yeah. So, Daphne, do you love extracurricular activities outside of, I guess, studying every day? Yep. Um, do you want to share a little bit about that outside of studying just pharmacy? Yep. So, I am quite the Sporty kind of guy. Uh, I do <laughs> play football on, I think it's every every Thursday, I guess. Yeah, uh, and not just that. I do. I'm also involved with uh, the marketing team. I do quite a few bits and pieces of uh, stuff that they do want me to do uh, do for them. So yeah, I am quite involved with uh, you know other stuff that just doesn't pertain to um, to uni. And that's another thing which I probably should uh, you know sort of reiterate. It's not just what it's not just your reading and it's not just your you know you sitting on your books trying to constantly kill yourself and you know for, for good grades like you need to get the whole experience uh, out of it and that's the most important thing because nowadays I think uh, and maybe they would agree with me here that once you get to the workforce no one really looks at you know whether you've got your A or your A star or whatever People really look at you as a whole. Can you? What can you contribute to to, to society generally? Can you, are you? Do you have really good communication skills? Are you? Um, are you empathetic? Can you? You know, apply your skills. You know, from a cognitive and a critical thinking perspective. And I think those those are really really important. Uh, I guess in in, uh, in in that regard. Right. Um, there was a question here about doing a Bachelor of Pharmacy in another university and coming here and do the Masters of Pharmacy in the fifth year. Um, that's, that's possible. So if you're going to do the five-year course, you have to do the undergraduate and the MPharm together. Um, however, if you do an undergraduate course, um, a Bachelor of Pharmacy in a different university, we have other postgraduate courses like a Masters of Clinical Pharmacy um, it, 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 that may interest you. Um, in terms of specialization, I talked about being a specialist pharmacist, for example, in cardiology in the hospital. 
Um, it really depends. You can some some of them have a master's of clinical pharmacy, um, and then they have been in a cardiology ward, um, working in the cardiology ward for a very very long time. Um, they sometimes also do some um, online specialization clinical courses. Um, they don't necessarily have to have a PhD. Um, there was a question here. So there is an exam at the end of the internship year, and that's run by the Pharmacy Board of Australia, um, uh, not by, you know, it's a national exam. So there are exams, they're all communication exams, um, and they're also written exams as well. What about uh, student programs and uh, student clubs that are available? What else is available to you as undergraduate students in Parkville? Uh, there is quite a few clubs. Um, we are very close to Melbourne University as well, which have, uh, as they're a much bigger campus like Clayton, um, they have a lot of clubs which you can join, sporting clubs, and there's clubs at Clayton which you can join. But here on Parkville, we have um, very, uh, smaller clubs, but they're very specialised clubs. So we do have one uh, for international students yes. called PISA. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah, it's PISA, yeah. Yeah, which... Um, just helps them, uh, you know, join in and be a part of the community. There's a gaming club which holds meetings every uh, week, and we just play board games and get to know each other. Um, there's a lot of clubs that run a lot of different events, like MAP, which is a music and arts club. So they do they're trying to uh, do a theatre production at the moment. They also hold music. Um, things like concerts and um, a workshop in the holidays. So there's quite a lot of different things which you can uh, join if you have interest in them. Great. Um, maybe Michelle, do you want to maybe talk a little bit about if students are struggling, you know, within the farm side course or maybe the pharmacy course, what kind of resources are there on campus? Yeah, sure. So absolutely our motivation is for our students to be successful. Uh, and so our skills coaching program where we work in small groups with academics really allows us to identify with the students who might be struggling. Uh, they can tell us and, and online sort of let us know that actually can you, you help point me in the right direction here or if we see that somebody is struggling with um, some concepts in uh, perhaps physiology or pharmacology. We have some additional support classes that we call past classes that are run by students who've been successful in that unit previously and so we can encourage students to sign up for that additional support class. And there are also a lot of additional services that are available uh, through our learning skills advisors um, that operate um, throughout the university and we have a number of those people on campus and they'll work with the students on their, their writing skills or their essays and assignments. We also, again, we can identify students who are not engaging. So as part of both courses, we talked about active learning is important. So it's important that you have done your preparation or discovery prior to lectures. So if we see that you, a student is not um, you know, going to the online learning system and not looking at the material, not looking at the lecture notes, not attending practicals, we can actually you know, reach out to those students and kind of talk to them because sometimes you know, life happens when you're a student and there, there can be other challenges, um, personal things that you're dealing with that take you away from your focus of study and we also have services there to support students um, who, who might, you know, there's financial assistance programs, there's counselling available, there's housing services, so we do, you know, it, it is of our highest priority um, to support the students uh, through their, their journey at, at Monash. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, there's also a question here about work experience incorporated into the course. So I think we briefly mentioned about placements um, as part of the course. So in the pharmacy course, um, the students go out for placements as early as first year um, to the hospital setting. Um, they go for a few days uh, during, the, during the course. Um, and then in uh, one day, and then in the second year, a few days in the first semester, and then they progress to the second semester where they do like a week-long um, 
placement in hospital and a week-long placement in community setting. So that occurs during the, the 12th week of the course, um, and sometimes the longer ones will occur probably during the breaks as well. So it really depends on the year and when it's located. Um, but it's, it's done as part of the curriculum. So you don't have to look for the placement sites. We arrange all of that uh, for you um, during the course. Um, what about farm side? Yeah, so in the pharmaceutical science course, it's during the third year of the program that we have professional placements. Uh, so if you are in the three-year degree, the Bachelor of Pharmaceutical Science, there's a four-week placement within uh, third year. If you're in the Bachelor of Pharmaceutical Sciences Advanced with Honours course, that is an eight-week placement. And then students are also encouraged to apply for summer or winter vacation scholarship placements uh, where you can get an additional 12, up to 12 weeks of working in an internal research environment or an external um, work experience. So we have really strong um, networks with a lot of the, the pharmaceutical and allied industry within Victoria. Great. Um, there's a lot of questions about, you know, the competitiveness about getting jobs. So similar in pharmacy, you know, once you graduate, um, once, once you become registered as a, as a pharmacist, or during an internship year, for example, there are a lot, of, a lot of opportunities for you to be able to do internships in the hospital or community setting. Um, there are like 5,000 community pharmacies um, in Australia. There are a lot of hospitals, public and private hospitals as well, who take interns. Um, they are competitive, um, of course, and that's why we want our graduates to be different. We want our graduates to have the skills um, and have the subset of skills that will make you different from other graduates as well. So we emphasize a lot oral communication skills that what Danson was saying is not just about getting good grades and doing well in exams, but being able to, you know, excel when you go out for interviews and we have a lot of resources to um, prepare you prepare you for prepare you and make you workforce ready. <laughs> I often see sometimes in the newspapers that pharmacy graduates are not paid very well. Any right. thoughts on why that would be reported that way? <laughs> I think as an intern, as an intern, um, you do get you, you don't get paid as a pharmacist because you're still an intern. So maybe that's why they always look at the internship year and it looks as if you know, as a graduate, your salary yeah. doesn't look. Yeah, that so, way. I, and I think that's really important for you to realise that when that's reported in the popular press, they are looking at the intern salary. So that's how much you're getting paid while you're still completing your degree. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't represent the salary that you would then expect once you're a registered pharmacist. So don't be misled <laughs> by that. <laughs> that's true. Um, let's see, any other questions? Um, How about from Danson and Bonnie, what do you see as the difference between pharmacy course and pharmaceutical science? Because we're still getting a few questions about that online. How would you explain it to students, what, or prospective students, what the difference is? It might well, be hard because we both yeah. only <laughs> choose one perspective. Yeah. I, I honestly, the reason I picked pharmaceutical science over pharmacy because I quite enjoy when um, I learned about the courses, I like the look of the pharmacy course more than the pharmaceutical course. But I'm not a people person. I don't really want to hear about your problems. <laughs> I, don't, like, I want to help you, but I'm, I don't think I could help someone to the extent that Danson yeah. could and tell them this is what you need to take. I'd rather formulate it and give it to them so that I help the general population. Yeah, and I think that's just the biggest difference. Like she just said, as pharmacists, we get to deal with patients on a regular, whereas in pharmaceutical science, they're the guys who are at the back, you know, trying to formulate drugs uh, or therapeutics that will eventually get to us pharmacists who will then counsel patients. So in a sense, we are interconnected, but on one hand, we've got myself and so many other pharmacists who will be talking to patients, which is something that she doesn't like, uh, but it's something that I enjoy. Um, and on the other hand, you also have your pharmaceutical scientists that are trying to get uh, the best therapeutics for us. So yeah. I think that's just the biggest difference. Yes, yeah, certainly within my research as a pharmaceutical scientist, 
I want to understand the end users of the product and the medicine and how do I make that medicine the right way for that patient. But then I go back and work in, in my lab with my research team so that I'm creating another tool for the, the, the healthcare toolbox that pharmacists and healthcare providers have access to. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I think the courses are a bit different in the way they're structured as well as you can see with the four-year course versus the five-year pharmacy course. And also um, in first year, I'm pretty sure in pharmacy, they did three subjects and which had a much higher um, uh, emphasis on talking to people and helping yeah. people, whereas we did four subjects which are all very science-based. We did labs, we did up to four labs a week. Um, and so, yeah, it, it, they're quite different in that sense as well, what you're learning, even though we end up learning the same sort of material. Yeah. And I think one of the things that maybe Danson can share is that, you know, in, in a pharmacy course, because we deal with a lot of people, some of the assessments are simulated where you have to, you know, do a simulation with a patient and be able to counsel a patient on how to use the medicine. So mm -hmm. it's great that pharmaceutical science can you know, develop great drugs, but if we as pharmacists aren't able to educate patients on how to use it, um, it's not going to be, it could be harmful at some point as well if not used correctly. So maybe, Dan, if you want to quickly just talk about, you know, how we teach you to communicate with patients and how we assist you as well. Yep. So uh, we do get a bunch of case studies uh, to work on uh, as groups and essentially pick out what, uh, you know, the, well, what are the key points in that particular case study? So, say for example, you have a guy that walks in and he's got, you know, a problem with, uh, you know, his hand, and then you just try to uh, dig what's what's important in that case study. And then after the whole workshop, uh, which I think we discussed, you will then get to role play that particular scenario with a patient, could be the workshop facilitator and essentially recommend a product for that particular guy. So, uh, like I said, you know, if, he, if he's got um, some pain in his hand, it could be something like paracetamol that you give, and then he can obviously come back to the pharmacy if things just aren't working for him. So uh, that's just how we run our things in, uh, in, the, in the workshops. And it does, obviously, like I said, uh, so many times improve your uh, communication skills. It is quite daunting at the start, you know, standing in front of everyone and speaking mm -hmm. uh, in front of your facilitator, but as you go, it does get very easy, and I can tell you it's it's really worthwhile, honestly, so, yeah. Right, um, just maybe quickly one last question. What's it like learning in the pharmacy course? So I think what Dan's is saying, you know, you do small group activities, um, where you have to do case studies. Um, in addition, you might have some essays where we assess your written communication. There are tests involved as well, but there's also simulation where we probably, you know, you have to go into a room and then interact with a simulated patient and we assess you that way as well. So there's a wide range of um, assessments and how you learn. Um, so in addition to small group setting uh, case studies um, and also essays, you know, there's a lot more, you know, role playing, mm -hmm. Um, as well in the virtual pharmacy simulation we talked about, you also learn that way. Yeah. I think there's a the fantastic question that's just come in that said, what does Monash offer for students who choose to study pharmacy or pharmaceutical sciences that other universities might not offer? What's, what's our competitive advantage to you for choosing here? Uh, and I think um, that there is, without a doubt, the, the research that happens within our faculty that underpins what we teach to you puts you at the forefront of the career um, and others in, in this discipline. You will know what the drugs are that are going to be coming onto the market 10 years from now. We're not teaching you about what was, you know, released 10 years ago, but actually we're looking forward into the horizon, predicting what the future might hold for you. And I think that our intensive research is is really a very key part of what we provide to the students. And that we don't only do research that's pharmaceutical research, we also have a number of staff who are internationally and nationally recognised for the research they do into how we do education. What are the best practices in 
teaching students pharmacy and pharmaceutical scientists. So you will find that the academic staff here that you deal with are leading their fields. And I think that really is the, the competitive advantage that we offer. Great. Um, so three times up, I think. So um, unfortunately, we weren't able to answer all the questions. There's quite a lot of questions there, and I think uh, that shows interest which is great. Um, however, please don't feel like um, you can't ask any more questions after this, so please direct further queries about a course to the email that you see on your screen, so pharmacy.marketing at monash.edu. Um, there are also a couple of questions around admissions and eligibility information. You can find all of that at the study.monash website. Um, you can find entry requirements and so on on there as well. So um, if there's nothing else to add. No, fantastic. Thanks for joining us uh, for this session. And we, we look forward to meeting some of you face to face at our open days that are scheduled in October, uh, August, if you can make it, um, campus tours that are available to you, or perhaps when you enroll next year.